Hello everyone and welcome to this Buncee webinar. This is the Buncee 101 webinar. So if you are new to Buncee or if you just want a refresher about what Buncee is and what you can do with it, uh, this is a great webinar to join in on. So if you are new or you don't have a lot of experience with Buncee, uh, you might be wondering, what is Buncee? Buncee is an award-winning content creation and communication tool we were awarded the 2019 Topic for Learning by Common Sense Education. We had the honor of winning that same award the previous year as well, in addition to a number of other awards over the years. And we're very proud of that because we take what we do very seriously. And what we do is we give students the tools to represent their learning in a way that makes sense for them. We do that by giving students a very easy to use drag and drop interface. Students can add in whatever media they would prefer to use and they can drag and drop that in to demonstrate their learning in their own way. This is just a quick overview of some of the assets that we offer. So we do have our own graphics library and that consists of educational graphics and things like that, but also fun stickers and animations. We have, uh, of course, the ability to add in inspirational quotes and messages. We have an entire section of emojis that we built out with social emotional learning in mind. And of course, if you do want to search the web, you can do so as well without having to leave Buncee. We do have a web image search. It's powered by Pixabay, so it's Creative Commons licensed, safe and legal to use. You don't have to worry about copy, uh, copyright strikes or anything like that. Uh, it's also keyword filtered, so a little bit better than just kind of having to open up another tab and go out and look for images that way. Students don't have to get distracted. You can also add in educational YouTube videos as well. We do have a YouTube video search uh, within Buncee as well. You can also choose to record your own video or record maybe just your audio or uh, take photos as well. So all of those are great options. And this is just a little bit of uh, an example of how our video feature works. Hi, everyone. Hi. Hi. Welcome to our studio on office. So of course you can adjust volume and make it full screen if you want to as well, um, but very easy to use once it's in there, of course. Additionally, um, you can generate a QR code with the push of a button, and additionally, you can also include assessment tools within your Buncee. So you can include things like a free response question or multiple choice questions. And then what you can do is you can push your Buncee as an assignment to your students via the Buncee Classroom dashboard. Your students can then open that up and answer those questions and turn that into you for a grade. Uh, if you want to learn more about the Classroom dashboard side of things and how you can share Buncee assignments with your students, um, there's definitely lots of videos, webinars, and things that you can check out. Or of course, you can always explore the Classes tab up at the top of your dashboard and it's very intuitive and easy for you to explore as you explore your own as well. But what can you do with all of these different assets? Well, you and your students, of course, can combine them in a number of ways to create a wide variety of material for your classroom and beyond. Um, and you might notice, uh, scrolling on the side there, a lot of different examples of different things that you can make. And you might notice that some of them are different sizes. Uh, so of course, Buncee allows you to choose your canvas size. What I'm showing you right now is the classic Buncee size. It's great for presentations and slideshows, but you can choose a different canvas size. Let's say you wanted to make something like a worksheet or a printable or a flyer. You can choose a letter size. If you wanted to make flashcards or things like that, you can choose the flashcard or trading card size. Um, you can choose a square size if you wanted to make something for social media. So there's a lot of things that you can create beyond your classic presentations and slideshows. If you are an educator, what can you do with Buncee? Well, of course, you can use Buncee to create and share digital content with your students quickly and easily. Um, and of course you can share things like notes and things like that and just kind of create that and share that directly with your students. And that's very helpful if you are, um, you know, having remote learning or blended learning or anything like that. Um, but beyond just being, a, uh, being able to share kind of that rote text, um, you can also use Buncee's media features to demonstrate multiple concepts in different and unique ways. You can 
give students real life examples of things. Uh, you can help them visualize concepts. So there's really a lot of things you can do in that regard. For example, in this uh, Buncee, a teacher chose a photo for the background. They put text over the top to um, ask the question and they used uh, shapes there at the bottom to illustrate this problem and this concept. And again, they're giving students a real life example of when they might actually need to know the area of a triangle. In this example, uh, the teacher is illustrating these words and definitions using stickers, animations. Uh, they've added a GIF here to show pollination. And down at the bottom, they're actually using a combination of stickers and the drawing tool to create their own diagrams. So again, there's really so many different things that you can do in so many different ways that you can uh, demonstrate concepts to your students. If you are a student, what can you do with Buncee? Well, if you're a student, of course, not all students learn the same ways. Uh, some are visual learners, some are audio learners. So no matter what kind of learner your student is, not only can you reach them as a teacher uh, in how you are creating content for them, but students can feel empowered to share their learning in whatever way makes most sense for them. So of course they can add in things like, like web media, um, from you know from within Bunsey of course there's the web image search or the ability to search for YouTube videos and things like that they can add in shapes as well as far you know as for a, uh, a design tool or um, in this example for maybe illustrating a math problem they can add in drawing to create diagrams or to express themselves um, they can add in resource links and files um, to kind of supplement what they are learning about of course, uh, they can use text as well. Uh, they can record their own video and audio and really share their voice, take their own photos. And of course, there's so many different backgrounds and stickers and animations and emojis for students to choose from as well. So when students are doing this, they really are becoming active um, participants in their education. They're becoming actively, um, you know, they're becoming active in uh the creation of these materials and that really helps them not only feel more confident and empowered but also it really helps promote stickier learning when they're taking an active role. And additionally we noticed that educators as well as administrators um, have used Buncee to build and enhance their school communication. So you can use the different canvas sizes to create different kinds of materials that you can share digitally or that you can print out. Um, things like brochures or newsletters and things like that. You can design a web banner for your school or classroom's social media page or school website. You can use the square size for social media posts so you can communicate with your whole school community. Um, there's really so many different things that you can do. And additionally, of course, you can uh, use these similar and same kinds of ideas to uh, have your students create fun projects. So for example, they can make their own newsletters and newspapers, maybe about uh, current events or about something that they've read. Uh, they can make their own banner for something or um, the banner size is also great for making their own bookmarks. Um, so that's something that could be fun really in the library, but also for students uh, to do maybe about what they're reading. Um, students can make kind of their own, you know, mock-up uh, social media page, maybe about a historical figure or a literary character. There are really so many different things that you can do. The possibilities are truly endless. But beyond just the ability to create these materials, Bunsey also offers tools to help foster the four C's of STEAM education, which are creativity, communication, collaboration, and critical thinking. So of course, you and your students are able to publish and share your content in a variety of ways to authentically share your work with an authentic audience and um, to make sure that everyone is connected. So there are a lot of sharing options that we'll go over. There are a couple ways to engage in discussion with Buncee. You can comment on Buncee's, uh, of course. Um, you'll notice actually a little comment button here at the top. You can click on that and you can actually leave a comment on Buncee's. Um, so that's a great way to have a class discussion. We'll also talk more about Buncee boards a little bit later, but they're also a great way to have a class discussion. And in the middle here with Buncee badges, uh, you and your students, you can actually earn and unlock these Buncee badges as you do things that you would do normally, like 
creating buncees or sharing to boards or things like that. And um, these are a really fun way to reward that engagement and encourage that creativity in your students because whenever they are actively, you know, engaged in creating, they're earning these badges. It feels like, you know, a video game feels like unlocking rewards and um, it is a fun way to be able to reward them at something they can really be proud of. And additionally, of course, we want to be able to give tools that will help teachers save time and focus more time on teaching and less time on creating a bunch of materials from scratch if that's not what you want to be doing. So of course, like I mentioned earlier, you can create and grade those interactive assignments if you want to do that and then um, you utilize, again, that classroom dashboard side of things. You can share and distribute resources in a number of ways. Of course, I mentioned you can share your buncees. So you can share buncees with your colleagues and you know they can copy and edit and um, you have them for themselves and things like that. Again, we'll talk more about buncee boards, but that's another way that um, you can share and distribute resources and, uh, and really collaborate and communicate with each other. And of course, uh, in buncee, you can start from scratch and let your creativity really run wild um, but you don't have to do that if you don't want to we have um, actually really thousands of templates uh, that you can use they're ready to go and completely customizable so you can really um, use that as a jump starting uh, you know way to get started quickly and uh, you can customize them to suit you and your students needs Bunsy boards, like I mentioned uh, just a little bit ago, they are basically like digital bulletin boards where you can pin your Bunsies. And there's really so many things that you can do with Bunsy boards. Um, but let's say you wanted to uh, you do kind of a class project or, um, you know, be able to have your students share with each other in a class. You can all add your Bunsies to the board. Everyone can see each other's work. And as you can see in the GIF, um, you can open the Bunsies up and you can actually comment on them, uh, leave comments on them on the board and reply as well. So it's a great place to have a virtual class discussion in a safe and secure environment. And it's also a great opportunity for students to practice their digital citizenship skills, again, in a safe and controlled environment. And I do want to talk really briefly about Ideas Lab. Again, we'll go uh, into a lot of these things in more detail a little bit later on. But another great thing that we do offer is Ideas Lab. Uh, if you're not really sure what you can do with Buncee or with boards or with, you know, if, if you're not sure what your students can do, you can go to Ideas Lab and here you'll find completed examples of student work, teacher work. You can really get a feel for what you and your students can do. Um, there's a wide variety of different kinds of materials in Ideas Lab. Sometimes you will find things like uh, lessons and resources that you can just use or share right away. Other times you will find, um, for example, uh, a completed Buncee, a completed example so that you can see what it could look like when it's all done. And when you click on it, you might be guided to a template, one of our templates from the templates library. And um, that will be kind of a blank template that will guide you to create your own version of that idea. So Ideas Lab is a great place to go to get started and to explore what you and your students can do. And I also wanted to mention really briefly that uh, in Buncee, you can also connect with your Teams account. If you have Microsoft Teams, you can right from your Buncee dashboard, you can schedule live lessons, one-on-one -on -one sessions, and Teams meetings. Your students can also join right from the Buncee account. So it makes it really easy, especially again, if you are in remote or um, a hybrid setting or something like that, you're able to communicate with your students quickly, easily, and securely. I like to say that Buncee is, uh, it's simple and easy to use, of course. It's easy enough for a kindergartner to pick up and start using, but it's powerful enough for, of course, um, you know, higher level for, for, um, you know, really all the way up through 12th grade, I would say college beyond, um, and for educators to use as well to create their own materials. And it's something that not only can everyone in your school community, uh, easily and quickly use it for whatever their purposes are. Um, 
but it's something that you can use to connect everyone in your school community as well. So there really are so many possibilities for everyone in your school community. I just want to share a couple of testimonials really quick because I really do like them. Um, this one, uh, it is three o'clock on the last full day of school. Uh, these kids are not looking at the clock though. They're looking at their buncees. They're fully engaged and on task. Um, this kid is sharing at the smart board and these kids are just, again, they are fully engaged, which I think really says something. Uh, this one is really cute. Um, so these kids are so excited about Buncey that instead of, um, you know, running home to go play video games or what have you, uh, they ran home to continue working on their Buncey. And uh, that, I think, also really, really says, some, says something. Um, really, that's what we want to see. When students are having fun, that means they're engaged. When they're engaged, they're learning. And when they're learning, we see, obviously, these improved learning outcomes. Um, for example... 91% uh, of students met the grade level standard for ELA when using Buncee in this particular case. Um, we've heard a lot of success stories. These are just some of our favorites. Um, and actually in 2019, we did an efficacy study. We polled a number of educators and we found that 95% of them said that Buncee was a good investment in student engagement and that 89% of them uh, had said that their, Bunce that their students were asking to use Buncee, whether that was um, if this teacher said, oh, what well, you know, he gave them some options and they would choose Buncee or if they would just literally walk in, you know, that day to school and say, can we use Buncee? Um, so again, I think that really says something that's absolutely what we want to see. Um, we want to help students succeed and we want to make it easy for educators to help their students succeed. So uh, that is absolutely our goal. And um, like you might have noticed throughout uh, this presentation, um, if you uh if you have used Buncee maybe in the past and haven't, uh, you know, uh, maybe used in a little uh, while, if you haven't used recently, um, you might have noticed some updates uh, to, of course, our logo. logo. Um, but Buncee is now a part of the Capstone family. We're really excited to be um, a part of Capstone. Capstone is also very committed to student success, so we're very excited and honored um, to be a part of this family and very much looking forward to a lot of um, new things and exciting things to come. So at this point, what I would like to do is show you, of course, this was one example of a Buncee. And, um, you know, again, Buncee is really great for uh, presentations and slideshows and things like that. But I want to show you another example of a Buncee. And uh, again, this is also just one example. There are really so many different things that you can do with Buncee. Um, but I want to show you this one. This is actually a second grade book review. And um, again, there are so many different things that you can do with Buncee, but um, book reviews are really very popular. And um, th because I think really there's so many different things that you can do in different ways that you can um, you know, express yourself. Uh, again, definitely, I I mentioned briefly earlier, Buncee is truly something that you could use, um, you know, from any grade level, again, from kindergarten really to college. And of course, it's a powerful tool for educators to have in their arsenal as well um, as they create materials for their classroom. And um, it's really something that you can pick up and is very easy to use at any age especially for our younger users, um, but truly it's something that any age you can um, you can pick up and start using very quickly. Buncee is also very much a cross-curricular tool. Again, I'm going to show a book review um, and it is very popular to do that, but absolutely Buncee is something that you could use, you know, throughout any sort of subject area. Um, truly, whether you're working on first grade reading or high school level calculus or science or anything really in between, um, you can use Buncee and you can find new and creative ways to do so. Um, but again, for this example, this is a second grade book review. And instead of doing a traditional book report, I know when I was in school, that was what we did a lot. Um, maybe you had to design a cover. Um, and if you weren't good at drawing, like that was kind of a challenge. Um, and then the rest of the project was just you, just you writing. And um, it didn't really offer a lot of other opportunities to be creative and to demonstrate your learning in another way. 
Um, so if you weren't really good at drawing, um, that was kind of hard. And if you weren't really great at writing, it was kind of hard for you to demonstrate that you understood what happened in the book. So uh, Bunsey offers students the ability to express themselves creatively um, and creatively in different ways using different medium, um, but also it allows students to use different kinds of media to demonstrate their learning in their own way and in a way that makes them feel comfortable. Um, and even just to practice expressing themselves with different kinds of media, which is absolutely something that will help them uh, in their academic career and beyond. So in this example, uh, again, it's a second grade book review. And instead of just uh, you know doing a more traditional book review cover, the student has chosen a Buncey background um, with this little desk and book you know cover on it. And then she actually took a photo of the front and back covers of her book. So uh, she's able to make kind of a very creative uh, and different first slide or first page. On the next page, again, instead of writing about the main characters, what she's done instead is she's chosen a background. Um, she's titled a page main characters with text. She's chosen these stickers to represent these main characters. Um, she's labeled them with text as well. And she's actually attached her own audio to these stickers. So I'll go ahead and play that for you. Ragweed's curious, he talks back a lot, argues, and he is a very close friend to Poppy. And he does not listen to the leader, which is Poppy's father. So, um, without doing a lot of writing at all, the student is able to very clearly demonstrate they understand who these main characters are and what their role in the story is. Um, so I think that's very powerful. On the next page, again, they've chosen a background and they've chosen a number of stickers to visually illustrate a scene from the book. So they're able to demonstrate visually that they understand, again, what's going on in this scene. On the next page, again, she's chosen a, a background. Um, she's chosen stickers to show this character. Um, here, she's also included some video expressing her thoughts. So I'll go ahead and play that really quickly. Ragweed used to have an earring, and when Ragweed died by Mr. Okax, Poppy looked in Mr. Okax's palette, and she saw the earring, and she took it. What is so important about that earring? I don't really know. Let's see. So, uh, some students might feel more comfortable using video to express their thoughts. Um, sometimes... Um, you can more clearly see their thought process as an educator. Um, you can see that, you know, coming across through video sometimes a little bit more clearly. Um, if you are needing to demonstrate something like a math or science uh, problem or example, um, you can do that very clearly with video. And same thing with your students. They can demonstrate, um, you know, their math or science process or work uh, with video. If you are in a remote or hybrid uh, kind of a classroom setting, then video is very helpful because, again, you can kind of see their faces, get to know them a little bit better, and, um, again, be able to kind of see their thought process. And, uh, again, if you are recording video, your students can um, relate to you. It's good to see your face um, and things like that. So there's really a lot um, that could be said for video. And, of course, um, if your students don't want to do video, um, you can also record audio. Um, so that's another way maybe sometimes students are just more comfortable speaking about things. But don't necessarily want to be on camera, that's okay. You can just record audio as well. Um, there's a lot of things that you can do, do definitely with video. Uh, here she has chosen text to define what an owl pellet is. So at this point, what I wanted to do was talk a little bit about Microsoft Immersive Reader as well. So you might have noticed when I hover over a text box, I'll get this little book symbol. And you might have also noticed that there's a little book symbol here at the top. And that's because um, Buncee has actually partnered with Microsoft Immersive Reader and um, it comes with Buncee. You don't have to do anything extra. It's not an extra you know, plugin or anything like that. Microsoft Immersive Reader comes uh, you know, with Buncee. So what that means is you're able to use uh, and read all of your text uh, on a particular page of your Buncee within Immersive Reader. Um, so for those of you that don't know what Immersive Reader is, Immersive Reader is a tool that enables readers of all ages, abilities, and backgrounds to really nurture a love of reading by setting their own preferences and allowing them to read in a way that makes them comfortable and um, is helpful to them. 
So what I'll do is actually, uh, just as an example, again, you can click on the little um, book here and that will read all the text in this text box. And uh, if you want to, you can also click on the book here at the top and this will read all of the text on this page of your Buncee, uh, including the title of this Buncee as well. So let's go ahead and do that. We'll open this up in Immersive Reader. And um, of course, down here at the bottom, the first thing you'll notice is you can press play and you can have this text read out loud. I'll tell it a clump of things a bird has eaten but can't digest and then throws up. It depends on what the bird eats, but can... So just as an example, um, and sorry, it is a little gross, but that's owl pellets for you. Um, so of course you can have uh, your text read out loud. If you click on the voice settings right next to the play button, you can speed that up or slow it down if you need to. You can also change the voice from male to female if one is more comfortable for you to listen to. Over here, you have a toolbar with some options. The first one is the two A's, that's text preferences. If you click on that, here you can increase or decrease the text size. You can increase or decrease the spacing. You can use a different font if one is easier for you to read than another. You can also choose a different theme if you might have um, a visual impairment or visual needs. Um, all of these options can make this a little bit easier for you. Um, you can adjust it to what you need. Uh, for a lot of students that have dyslexia, reading white on black is easier than black on white, so that's a great option. You can do that right there. Next to text preferences is this little icon. It's grammar options. Here at the top is a tool called syllabification. You can turn this on and off. Um, when you turn it on, it will visually break up the syllables in each word for you. So here I can see that pellet is two syllables, and I can have that visual reminder. I can also highlight different parts of speech. I can change the color again if something is easier for me to see than something else. Um, I can highlight different parts of speech and I can label them as well. So depending on what my level is, what I'm working on, I can have different levels of visual reminders for um, those different parts of speech if I'm learning about, of course, it's parts, of, uh, parts of speech or if I'm learning about uh, sentence structure, syntax, or if I'm learning a new language, this is all very helpful. Um, so there's a lot that you can do there. Next to grammar options is reading preferences, the little book icon. Um, here at the top is a tool called line focus. You can focus on just one line or a small group of lines at a time. And of course, as you, um, if you have your text read out loud, it will read and follow along with you. Or if you scroll down, it will follow along. Um, so this is really great, again, if you have dyslexia or ADHD or just trouble focusing or maybe even if you're just a little intimidated by looking at a huge block of text, um, this really helps you focus on just a little bit at a time, so it's very helpful. Below is Picture Dictionary. You can toggle it on and off. Um, you can see that it's on, though. When it's on, you can click on a word, and most words in most languages will give you a visual representation of that word. So again, very helpful to have that visual reminder and example. And by far my favorite feature is you can translate this entire document into over 60 languages. There are so many here to choose from and um, this is really so helpful not only if you are a student who is actively learning a new language, um, you're able to just you know use this as a tool to help you, um, but also if you're a student that maybe you're just trying to do your science homework and you're not, um, you know, but uh, you are learning a new language, um, this just lets you focus on you know, on doing whatever your work is um, without having to necessarily also work on translating everything yourself. Um, it kind of puts everyone on as much of an even playing field as possible. Um, it's also incredibly helpful for parents and family members. Um, so if you wanted to, for example, as an, as an educator, you could share maybe a newsletter in Buncee to your, um, you know, your, your students' families. Um, family members can open this up at home. They can open this up in Immersive Reader and read it in their native language, um, which is so immensely helpful. Um, there are really so many applications for this. Uh, and of course, even just beyond um, language, um, they can use Immersive Reader, maybe if parents have visual impairment or something like that, um, you know, this is helpful for them as well. Um, but yes, there are so many different uh, languages to choose from. So let's say we wanted to do Spanish Mexico, for example. We can do the entire document at once. It's better than dumping it into a translator and just doing it that way. You can toggle back and forth between the original and the translated language. And of course, you can have it read out loud as well. And 
immersive reader is an immensely powerful tool. Um, uh, like I said, it definitely, not only with a translation tool, but with all of the other options, it really puts everyone on as much of an even playing field as possible. And um, there are so many applications. It's really a very, very powerful tool. Uh, to go back to your Buncee, though, you can just click the back button. And here we are back in our Buncee. So just finishing up with this example, um, they tied the book that they're reading in with a science experiment they did in class. So here they are actually dissecting an owl pellet in class. Um, the student is able to take photos of their work and label them with text. And they're actually able to include video of their work as well. Um, so really, this is a great example of how Buncee um, is not only an excellent tool for ELA and for demonstrating um, your, your reading comprehension and things like that, um, of course, for digital storytelling and, um, you know, really giving students a chance to be creative, but also for STEM and STEAM and really for giving students uh, the opportunity to practice building a digital multimedia portfolio of their work. That is absolutely a college and career ready skill that uh, really it's never too early for students to start learning that. So now that we have taken a look at um, actually really two examples, um, let's explore how we can make our own Buncees. So what I'm going to do is just head over to my Buncee dashboard. So when you log into Buncee, um, it's going to take you to your Buncee dashboard. And this is where all of your Buncees live. You can see here that we're on the Buncees tab and we're on my Buncees. And to get started with a new Buncee, there's a couple of different ways that you can do this. Um, here's one way. You can click the plus sign. And you now have, you now have the option to start from scratch if you want to. Um, or you can start from any of our thousand plus totally customizable templates. So let's take a look at that really quick. Uh, what are templates? They're basically Buncees that are here ready for you to use and ready for you to um, customize to suit your own needs. Uh, of course, you can scroll here to just see the most recent ones. You can also search in the search bar, of course, or scroll through the categories here on the side. Um, there are so many different categories and so many different templates that are here and available for you. For example, if you wanted to take a look at making a birthday card for your students or having your students make them for each other for their birthdays, I think that's a really nice way to stay connected and things like that. Um, but you can absolutely do that here in, uh, if you take a look at the birthday greetings, there's so many, um, different ones here that you can take a look at. Um, there are educational templates, of course, maybe you wanted to look at a science template. Um, there are so many different ones to choose from, of course. Um, maybe you want to make a newsletter for your community. You can do that here. And these are things that you can just kind of uh, plug in your own information to if you want to. And just um, other than that, they are ready to go. Um, or if you wanted to, you can edit them as well. Maybe you kind of like this one, but you want to change up the colors or the placement of things, you can do that as well. Um, there are a lot of different things to choose from and a lot of different kinds of templates. Some templates you don't really have to do anything to at all if you don't want to. Um, you can just, uh, you know, print them out, share them online, share them on social. They're just ready to go and you can just use them as is. Um, we have things like bookmarks and posters and social media messages and banners and cards that you can just share and you don't have to edit if you want um, if you don't want to or if you wanted to edit this you could maybe you want to make um, this you know a different color or maybe you want to add a personal message to this maybe you want to add a video message or say to so and so from so and so um, there's really a lot that you can do um, and of course we have other templates uh, that you can kind of get more involved with and, and customize more um, or that you can uh, share with your students. We have a lot of things that are kind of like, uh, you know, little activities and things that you can do. Um, so I'm going to show you one of my favorite ones. Um, so you can click on a template and um, you can, of course, uh, 
you know, preview it here if you want to. So this one is a little activity. You can share this with your students. Your students can copy this, edit this, and complete this activity. And uh, then they can share it back with you if you want to. Um, you can share this one as is with them. Um, that's a lot of our templates are things that you can share as is with your students and that they can, you know, add in what they need to add in. Or if you wanted to, you could edit this and then share it with your students. Um, so in this one, you can share this with your students. They'll be able to read about adjectives, see some examples, and then they can um, use the drawing tool to circle the adjectives in the sentence. And then they can drag and drop the words to complete the sentence as well. And then they can do the same thing with adverbs. So if you like this, you can click use this template. And again, this one is ready to go as is. Um, and if you like it and just want to share, you know, share it right away with your students, you can do that and just click the share button. We'll go over sharing more in just a little bit. Um, but if you want to edit this, you absolutely can do so yourself. Pretty much anything on these templates are things that you can, you know, change and move around and make your own. Um, you can delete things if you want to. And um, I'll go into kind of the canvas uh, in a little bit more detail in just a bit. Um, so don't worry if you uh, don't understand how I'm doing something. That's totally okay. We're going to go over it a little bit more slowly in just a little bit. But you can change really whatever you want here. If you wanted to change the background, you can do so. We'll do this one, for example. Um, you can, you know, change the font, the color, the size of the text, whatever you want to do. Um, move things around. Uh, maybe you want to add something. Of course, you can do that. And this is just the first page. So your other pages are over here. Um, so let's say you wanted to change this up a little bit. You can do that. Uh, pick different examples. Um, you know, write about different adjectives, edit the text or something. Um, let's say you want to add a video here. You can do that. So let's go ahead and click the plus sign. And um, there's a lot of things that we can add, but let's go ahead and add something from YouTube. Um, let's do Khan Academy and let's type in adjectives here. And we'll get a little intro to adjectives video to add in. Now I can share this with my students. My students can open this up and they can uh, they can actually view this you know, in preview mode and then come in here to edit mode to edit. Um, on this page, maybe we want to rewrite these sentences. We can do that. We can change the directions or get rid of this cloud sticker or, you know, change this up however we want to. Um, on this page, again, maybe we, um, we want, you know, we like this format, but we don't want to do this with adjectives. Maybe we want to do it with a different part of speech or with a vocab unit. Um, we could, uh, you know, we can just kind of redo this we can kind of use the same format but um you know rewrite these sentences um rewrite these words down here um let's say we want you know this is one through five but let's say we want to do six through ten um uh, something that we can do is we can click and duplicate we can duplicate this page and now this one will be one through five and then this one we can rewrite the sentences and make it one through six if we want to or sorry uh five through ten we could do five through ten or six through ten Sorry, that's that's what I meant. There we go. We could do we could make this page six through ten. Um, so we could do that if we wanted to. Uh, let's say we don't want to do adverbs today. We can just delete this page and get rid of it. Um, there's really so many different things that you can do, um, and I highly recommend just kind of playing around with it and seeing what you can do. And um, you know, if you make a mistake, you can always start over. You can always uh, you know choose this template again. And um, so definitely recommend playing around with it. Uh, let's say you're all ready to go. Um, you would just click share, share this with your students. You would copy it, edit it, uh, or they would copy it, edit it. So let's pretend I'm the student. I've copied this Buncey. I've edited it, and um, you know I'm in edit mode now. And um, I what I'm going to do is follow the directions. So it says use the drawing tool to circle the adjectives. So I'm going to add drawing, drawing, and um, I'm going to circle an adjective. Uh, so. I can make this uh, a little bit smaller, but you just see as an example, I can go ahead and click done when I'm done. And on this page, I can drag and drop the words to complete the sentence. Um, so this is absolutely something that you could make yourself from scratch. Uh, for the most part, all of our templates are made just using the regular tools that are available to everyone in Buncee. There's nothing like extra or special um, in that way that we do typically. Um, so you can make your own templates if you want to, but um, we do have so many to choose from and um, 
absolutely, if you wanted to make something like this, you could do that and you could make it your own and you can start with these kind of basic templates and customize them as much as you want to create so many different things. Or again, you can use them just kind of as they are. And um, that's a very helpful way to, uh, to get started. So I know that we um, you know, took a look at how we can explore making a Buncee and making something using a template, but what if you do want to start from scratch? Well, it's very easy to do. So again, just click that plus sign and we are going to click this start from scratch button to start from scratch. So this bl uh, brings us to our blank creation canvas. And you've had some glimpses of this, uh, you know, from, uh, at, you know, throughout this presentation um, as to what this looks like, but let's take a closer look. Um, it's pretty straightforward and simple. Again, if you wanted to explore on your own, um, I think you could feel confident doing so, but uh, just so you have kind of a brief idea of where things are. Of course, in the middle here, this is your canvas. This is where you're gonna add all your items. Um, over here on the side, this is your pages panel, and you can add as many pages as you want to your Buncee. You just click the plus sign, and you're gonna click add blank new page. So just do that and you have a blank new page. To select the page you wanna work on, just click on that page. And um, if you wanna hide this panel away or bring it back, you can do so whenever you need to. Over here on the other side, this is your items panel, of course. You can click the plus sign to add new items to your canvas. Um, so we'll go over that in just a little bit. Um, in the middle here, you notice these large buttons are here. Um, and they are just here because nothing is on your canvas right now. Um, so if you do want to go back and select a template, you can always go back and uh, click here and uh, you will be able to go back and do that. Um, if you want to change the background, you can do so by clicking this button or by clicking down here at the bottom. This is also a change background button. Um, and of course the plus sign right here is, um, you know, for you to add your items as well. You can click the big one or the little one over here. Um, again, this toolbar down here at the bottom, this will change based on what you have selected right now, because nothing is selected. You do have the option to change your background. You can also duplicate this page like we saw earlier or delete it entirely. And then up here, of course, we have some things that we'll talk probably a little bit about later. Of course, you have an undo and a redo button. Um, if you need to zoom in to, and to work on something in details, you can do that and you can pan over, um, if you need to do that. Absolutely. Um, you can control your settings here, um, but really uh, there's nothing too much uh, or too complicated that you have to worry about here. And of course, um, you can resize your canvas and we'll talk about that a little bit uh, a little bit later. So there's no right or wrong way to start creating. Uh, but what I like to do first is I like to start with a background. Um, you can either click here or this little button down here at the bottom. Either way, it's going to give you some different options for your backgrounds. So over here on the side, um, you'll notice we have some different options. You can choose a background from the web. Remember, um, I mentioned that we did have a web image search powered by Pixabay. So you can search the web without having to leave Buncee for a web background. You can also choose to have a color as your background. You can upload an item from your device as a background, maybe a photo that you have. Um, you can go ahead and upload that to use as your background or you can choose from any of our Buncee art categories and they range from things like photos to things that are more art and design inspired. Um, so there's so many different ones that you can choose from. I highly recommend just kind of scrolling through the categories and browsing and seeing what's here. And that way you can have a good idea of what's here and then you can kind of know what to search for, of course. Um, so definitely you can scroll through the categories or if you kind of know what you want, you can just head to the search bar here. Um, so let's say I wanna make my own book review, kind of like we saw in our example, but maybe a little bit more of a simplified version. So let's go ahead and just type in book. And we have some book related backgrounds. Um, I really like, let's see here. I really like this one. Um, it has uh, very co very much like cozy vibes. Um, so you can click on the background that you want um, and you can either drag and drop or you can click uh, to add it to this page or to all pages. Um, we're really only doing the one, but let's go ahead and do all pages anyway. So we do have this other page over here. 
So next you want to add some items to your Buncee, of course, and you have a couple of options. You can either click the big plus sign here in the middle to do that, or click this little one on the side. Either way, it's going to bring up your media palette. So anytime you want to add an item to your Buncee, you're going to choose something here from the media palette. Now I'll go over uh, the media palette with you really quickly, um, but it's pretty straightforward. So over here in the yellow, we have all the items that you can add in and then manipulate. So you can add in text through adding in a text box. You can add in a shape and change the color of the inside and outside of the shape. You can add a drawing um, and add your own kind of artistic touch to things with the drawing tool. In the red, these are items from our design team. So we do have our 3D assets. They're really great for uh, science and steam and stem visualization you can click and drag and view them from all angles so that's very helpful um, of course we have animations stickers we have the messages of course those inspirational quotes and things and emojis as well in the middle these are items from the web so we do have web images you can use as uh, an item on your canvas of course as in addition to as a background you can include 360 images. These are really great for things like virtual field trips. You can add an image and then click and drag and view it from all angles. So that's really cool. You can also include YouTube videos from a selection of educational YouTube channels. Um, so we'll definitely take a look at that as well. In the green, these are items that you can add and upload essentially. So if you want to uh, include something like an upload, I'll actually go through these really quickly. If you click on uploads, if you have an image or a document or something like that, you can drag and drop it in here or select it from your device's drive. If you've already uploaded something, um, like maybe an image or again, a file or something like that, you don't have to re-upload it every time you want to include it in a Buncee. You'll find it here under your my images or my documents or my videos. If you want to import a URL, for example, if you do go outside and into the internet, um, you can include things like YouTube links or Vimeo or image URLs, um, GIFs, things like that. You can upload them and embed them into your Buncee. Um, you just have to paste the link right there. That is what that is for. Of course, you can also record your own video as well as take your own photo. Um, so we'll actually, we'll take a closer look at that as well. And in the last column here, you can include free response questions and multiple choice questions in your Buncee if you so choose. Uh, you can then push this Buncee as an assignment to your students via the Buncee classroom dashboard. Your students will, will be able to answer those questions and then um, they'll be able to uh, turn that in for a grade. So if you do want to learn more about that, we do have um, some other resources, other videos available uh, that will show you step by step how to do that. Um, but just know that this is uh, where those features are. And of course, um, you know, just know that uh, that is how those features work and that's uh, the way that they function. And lastly, of course, you can include a QR code with the push of a button as well. Um, and this is really great because you're able to maybe include that QR code and um, you could cut it out separately and maybe put it on the inside of a book, for example, since we're doing a book review. Um, and then a student could open that book. They can scan the QR code and be taken to our book review Buncee and see kind of a little uh, review of the book. So that's one way to use it, but there's lots of things that you can do with QR codes. So let's take a quick look at how some, at some of the things that we can add in to our Buncee. Um, so we're doing our book review. So let's say I want to add in some text. I have a text box. I can click and drag it wherever I want and then double click to edit. Um, so maybe I just want to call this, um, you know, my book review. I can highlight to change my text down here at the bottom. You'll notice my toolbar has adapted. So here I'm able to do several things. Of course, I can change, you know, the font, the color, the size of my text if I need to do that. Um, there's a lot of options that you can explore, a lot of things that you can do with your text if you want to. And of course I can resize my box and then I can move it wherever I want it to go. So maybe I want to put it here for right now. Another cool thing you can do is maybe I want to put it over here, but it's not showing up very well over here. You can see it okay, but I want it to pop a little more. So if I click once on my text box, I do have again, some options down here I can explore. And one of them is fill color. I can actually click on that and 
say I want to do just white um, I can make it have just kind of a white background I can make it more or less opaque so I can do something like this and now my uh, background is still visible but my text is popping just a little bit more back to our plus sign let's add in something else let's go ahead and add in a shape why not just as an example um, you can choose from a lot of different kinds of shapes and things here um, and again you can change actually the inside and outside color so I can go ahead and pick border color and I can pick an inside color um, I can make the border go away or I can make it you know thinner or thicker if I want to as well and um, I can make the inside you know opaque if I want to so these are really great as a design tool or if you're studying geometry or things like that so there's a lot of cool things that you can do with shapes back to our plus sign um, let's say if I wanted to add in drawing certainly I could I'm not the best artist but I can go ahead and add in drawing maybe I'll just underline my text um, or be uh, sure why not let's do that um, so I can change the color if I want to um, and I can go ahead I can draw or erase I can change the brush size um, so there's a lot that you can do really I'm just gonna you know as an example go ahead and add that in when you're done click done and if you want to come back to this drawing you can of course add more drawings if you want to but you can also just click on this rectangle here on the side and here you're able to go ahead and you can continue drawing if you want to back to our plus sign let's add in something else let's do a 3d object um, again these are really fun for stem or scene visualization um, so for example let's say I wanted to do uh, you know a science one I really like these cell stickers I think they're really cool so I can go ahead and add that in and then when I am in uh, preview mode I'll actually be able to click and drag and view this from all angles and really interact with it so that is really fun really cool back to our plus sign um, now I could add in animations stickers you know messages emojis really any of these or another option for me is I can actually go ahead in the search bar here at the top and I can search and add in some other items um, so let's go ahead and do that we'll go ahead and add in just some other things um, let's just search book for example um, and again, you'll see over here we are on the Buncey Art category, but I can also click on the web image um, option and I can see some images uh, from our Creative Commons license library of images. But if I go back to Buncey Art, this is going to search all of our animations, stickers, messages, and emojis all at once. So it's a really great way to find what you're looking for because you're searching for everything all at once. Um, if uh, you see an animation, um, you might hover over it and see this little play button you can click on that and actually preview the animation to make sure it's what you want before it goes in if you like it you can go ahead and click on it and just make sure it has this little box around it and you're ready to go now I can keep going I can click on you know more items I can go ahead and add them in and I can really add as many items as a, uh, at a time as I want to um, I don't want this to be too overwhelming but I can go ahead and add in you know several things if I want to um, we'll do that and sure we'll do this little koala I, I think that's it I think that's all I want right now um, and I'll go ahead and I can either click add um, like I have been doing pretty much or I can also drag and drop these items in and that makes it super easy and of course I can move them around and things like that but I'm just going to you know just do this for now okay back to our plus sign um, now of course we can add a web image um, from the web if we want to um, let's go ahead and add a 360 image in just for fun uh, you can type in whatever you want in the search bar up here at the top you'll find images from places all over the world um, there's a really a lot of fun ones to choose from and again these are great for virtual field trips and things like that um, I really like this one you can actually view the earth uh, from above so that's a really fun one and again in preview mode we'll be able to um, play around with that and um, you know click and drag and view that from all angles as well so I'll go ahead and put that there make something smaller 
and I'm putting everything on one uh, page or one slide, but certainly you don't have to. You can space some things out and put them on different slides if you want to do that. Um, so we saw our YouTube channels. Uh, you know, we did see that earlier, um, but you can of course just go ahead and add that in um, really quickly if we wanted to do that. We could uh, go ahead here and maybe pick something from NASA and maybe get a space related one so we can see different launches. Um, so we can see something from the ISS. So you know, we could see about the James Webb telescope. Let's go ahead and add that, that in. Why not? Um, so really cool. Can add this, uh, this video in. So maybe I'll put this here. We'll move this guy over a little bit. Okay. Back to our plus sign. Um, some other things that we can do, of course, I talked a little bit about, um, uploading, um, but I'm going to show you how easy it is to record your own video as well. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and click the uh, record button. And let's say I wanted to do a, uh, a video about um, my thoughts about the book. Um, so I can go ahead and just click on that video button. I can click the red button to start recording. And uh, I really like this book. Uh, my favorite part was uh, meeting all the fun characters and learning more about them. Click the red button again when you are done to stop. And then you can just click upload. And when you do that, your video will be added to your Buncee. Again, you can go ahead and click preview to, um, to preview that. And you can view that in... Um, you know, in preview mode, and um, it's very easy to do. So I'm going to go ahead and just make that a little smaller. Back to our plus sign. Another option, maybe you want to take a photo of something. You, of course, could do that if you want to take a photo of your work and include that. Um, or maybe you will want to take a picture of um, your book cover, for example. You could do that as well. I'm going to go ahead and click the camera button right here. And let's say I want to take a picture of um, my book cover. I just have a notebook just here as an example. So I can go ahead and just hold that up. There we go. And just click the camera button. And what's great about the photo tool is you can click next. And um, I can go ahead and I can crop myself out. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. And uh, we'll, we'll do that just as an example. Um, you can do a circle crop. You can also rotate um, your image if you need to do that. And then click save and you can then upload your book cover and have that be part of your Buncee. So I'll go ahead and just put that here again just as an example. And really again there are so many options here. Lastly let's say I wanted to add a QR code. It's as simple as that. I can just go ahead and click that and add that here. Um, if I wanted to, let's go ahead and just put this on the second page just for fun. Um, one thing I could do is I can click copy and I can click paste. Or of course I could always just add whatever I want to to this page as well. Um, if I don't like something, I could go ahead and delete it. I might delete a couple of items actually. Um, let's go ahead and delete this koala just uh, just so that we have a little bit more room and things to play around with. Okay. Um, there are lots of things that you can do with items on your canvas, of course. Um, I have been doing a couple of them, resizing, moving around, um, you know, making things more or less opaque, um, you know, things like that. Another option, though, is you can record audio like we saw earlier in our example. So if I click on an item, um, you'll notice actually a couple of things down here at the bottom. If you uh, click on link. Here you can attach a link to an item. So if you want to um, include resources for your students or maybe, you know, supplemental materials or things like that. Um, if you want to create a bibliography or work cited page or something like that, you can, of course, include the link right here. Uh, press enter and it will be attached to this item on your canvas. You can also uh, attach audio to any item on your canvas. So to do that, just click the yellow audio button. And when you're ready, you can just go ahead and click the red button to start recording. And you can record whatever audio you need to here. And then when you're done, you can click it again to stop. You can then click upload. 
and you can preview this and uh, just listen to it and that's helpful if you're maybe learning a new language you want to hear yourself speak you can use this as a tool just for that um, you can also again just preview it make sure it's the way that you want it to be and if you don't like it you can remove it and redo this as many times as you need if you're ready you can click add and your audio has been attached again we'll be able to see this in uh, in preview mode we can click and hear that recording now we've been creating this entire time in our classic Buncee size which is really great for presentations and projects and things like that but if we click resize canvas at any time we can resize our canvas um, we can of course you can see we're in landscape we can click portrait um, or we can choose another size entirely including a custom size where you can put in the dimensions and um, use it however you want to of course we also have a playing card size uh, we have a business card size a letter size which is great for like newsletters or worksheets or printables a banner size um, which is also great for bookmarks if you put it in portrait mode um, and of course we have square size which is great for social media and things like that just as an example let's go ahead and click apply and change size now um, you might notice a couple of things a our items have moved around a little bit that's okay um, we're gonna fix that and additionally you might notice that our background looks a little different and that's because all of our backgrounds are designed with our classic Buncee size in mind and what that means is down here at the bottom we can actually click move background and in this case I can drag and drop and move my background around and um, really decide what I want to be the focal point of this so this is really fun you can have fun playing with the different sizes and the different backgrounds and really create something that's um, very unique looking so let's say I just want this section here I can do that and click done and now I can move my items around so actually I'm gonna leave my text there I think um, but I can move my items around I actually like my fairies uh, really tiny like that I think that's cute I'm just gonna put my star here in the middle just you know just for fun we'll go ahead and put this over here and really now all I'm doing is just resizing and moving some things around um, to make it a little bit easier on yourself absolutely you can um, you can make uh, you can choose the canvas size that you want to use uh, from the beginning if you want to um, that might make things a little bit easier um, you uh, absolutely can you just kind of pick what you want to do and you know start using that way um, you can also though change your canvas size at any time and it's um, you know not that big of a deal and if you don't like what you're doing like if I really didn't like this I could just go back and I could um, I could always just revert it to the original size uh, that it was so if I just wanted to see what something looked like I could do that also um, I could just you know take a look and um, again if I didn't like it I could just put it back when I was ready so you know we have a lot of videos kind of on this one page so it does actually work um, but of course you could also again you could spread things out if you want to um, so the less I think I think I'm pretty much done I think what I want to do now is uh, take a look at it in preview mode so I'm gonna click preview and it is going to prompt me to title my Buncee. So I'm just going to call this book review. I'm going to spell it properly though. Okay. And click done. And now that I am in preview mode, of course we can interact with our Buncee just like we would be able to normally. We can of course see all of our pages. Again, I didn't really put anything on this one, but here is our QR code, of course. Um, and here is our Buncee. So we can see our animations. I picked some subtle ones, um, but you can really have a lot of fun with the animations if you want to. Um, of course, I can click to load our panorama. I can make this full screen if I want to, but just for brevity's sake. Um, I can click and drag and I can view the earth from above. So this is a really fun one. Um, of course, I can play our YouTube video. Um, I'll do that really quickly. my uh, volume is very low right now actually but I think this is the launch um, waiting but um, you can also again make this full screen if you want to and again same with um, 
Same with uh, the video that I recorded as well. I can press play and uh, I can make it full screen or make it bigger if I want to. So of course I can make it full screen. We have our audio here as well. And you can record whatever audio you need to here and then right here. It'll always be kind of in the middle of um, whatever you record. And um, of course I can click and drag and interact with my 3D object as well. Um, so really this is just scratching the surface of what you can do with Buncee. And this is something that I kind of just threw together really, really quickly you know, in, in about five to 10 minutes or so, um, you know, and just kind of showcasing as many of our fun different features as possible. Um, but absolutely, you could make something I think that looks really nice and gets your point across and does what you need it to do, you know, within 10 to 15 minutes max. Um, and absolutely, that's something that you can do um, pretty easily and your students as well. Um, honestly, we think that the best thing is just you know, have your students explore Buncee, let them have fun creating and see what they can create. Um, and that's really the best way to learn. I think um, your students will have fun doing that and you will too. So uh, yes, this is our Buncee. And um, now that we're all done, the next thing I want to do is take a look at how to share this Buncee. If I click on the share button here at the top, I have some different options. First, you can see that I'm on the settings tab and here I can control the settings of my Buncee. I can control who can view this Buncee. Right now it's set to anyone with a link and that's what I'm going to leave it on, but I'll talk about the other ones too. If you want to, you can make it so that anyone can see it and anyone doesn't mean anyone in the world. Uh, it just means that the Buncee team is able to see it. So they're able to include it in staff picks and things like that, which is just where we share Buncees that we really like. If you want to, you can make it so that only specific Buncee users that you share this Buncee with can view this Buncee. So we'll talk more about that in just a bit. Or you can make it private. You can make it so that only you can see it. You can make your Buncee commentable or not. Um, we talked about the comments a little bit earlier. So you can um, allow comments on your Buncee or not. And of course, you can make your Buncee copyable or not. Again, that's up to you. If you make it copyable, you can... Um, make it so that others can copy this Buncee and then have their own version uh, that they can edit. Um, so if you're creating a template for your students, you definitely wanna make sure your Buncee is copyable. Uh, now for sharing, there's a couple ways to do that. If you click on code, that's where you get the link that we were talking about. You're gonna use this top one here that says link. All you have to do is click copy. And now anywhere you can share a link, you can share Buncee. It's as simple as that. If you want to embed your Buncee onto a website, you can use the embed code here as well. So that's what that is for. But most of the time, again, you're gonna use this top one right here. Another option is you can share directly with other Buncee users. So your students and your colleagues as well. So if you click share with Buncee users, you have two options. You can select from your classes. Now, we didn't talk too much about this, but of course you can set up your classes with your student accounts in Buncee in that classroom or classes tab. Um, and of course, you can then share directly with your students uh, once they're in Buncee. So you can uh, click the drop down menu and find uh, maybe a class that you want to share with. You can go ahead and select those students. You can select them individually or um, you can select them all. It's up to you. When you're ready, click share and this will be shared with your students. Now your students once you've shared with them in this way, or really anyone, um, once you share with them using the share with Buncee users tab, what they're going to do is they are going to log into their Buncee account and they are going to be, of course, automatically on the Buncee's tab right here and they'll be on my Buncee's. But what they're going to do is they're going to click on shared with me and here they're going to see the Buncee that was shared with them. They can click on it to open it up. They can also click open to open it up or they can just copy it uh, to copy it right away. Um, so really simple, easy, um, very straightforward to, um, you know, for uh, finding materials that have been shared with you. Um, and of course, if anyone shares anything with you, that's where you will find it. Um, of course, that is from your classes, but if you want to share with other Buncee users, for example, maybe if you're a librarian and you want to share materials directly to your, uh, you know, the uh, your teacher accounts, you can do that if you want to. 
um, if you are a teacher and you want to share directly to other you know, teachers. So if you want to share with within your school or your district, you can do that as well. Just enter in the Bunce user's email or username, click the plus sign and then click share and it will be shared right with them. So that is a great option as well. If you want to, you can also, of course, you can copy and paste uh, you know, the link that we talked about anywhere. You can copy and paste it into the body of an email if you want to. Um, but you can also use our email function to send an email. Um, you can go ahead and enter in your contacts. You can save them you know, all here so you don't have to enter them every single time if you don't want to. Um, you can send your Buncee as an email. It sends in like a cute little envelope looking thing. Um, and then you can check the status and you can see, uh, was your email delivered? Was it clicked on? Um, was the Buncee opened? So you can see all of that there. So that's a great way if you're trying to stay in touch with parents and family members. Similarly, we do have an RSVP, func uh, RSVP function that works uh, very similarly, of course, to the email function. And um, basically, you can send your Buncee as a cute evite. So if you're having a school event, maybe back to school night or a fundraiser or something like that, you can make your invitation on Buncee. You can send it using the RSVP feature and then you can see um, you know, who responded, who's coming, who's not sure if they're coming and uh, respondees can include uh, responses as well. Like, yes, I'm coming and I'm bringing this or something like that. So it's a great way, again, to keep in touch with, um, with parents or remind them of an event and things like that as well. Additionally, you can share directly to social media, including Google Classroom and Microsoft Teams. You can share immediately to them with the push of a button. So that makes it really easy to share with your students, um, depending on where you're keeping, uh, you know, all of their other information and um, materials. You can keep it all in one place by sending directly to platforms that you're already using. Um, and of course, you can download this Buncee as a PDF or as individual image files as well uh, for offline sharing. And the last option here in the middle is sharing directly to Buncee boards. So we're actually going to come back and talk a little bit more about this in just a bit. Um, and uh, I mentioned earlier what Buncee boards were. So that's what we're going to kind of go into right now. We're going to talk a little bit about Buncee boards and how you can utilize them. So Buncee boards, like I mentioned earlier, they're basically like digital bulletin boards where you can pin your Bunsies. So again, we're gonna come back here. Let's say, for example, I have made my Buncee book review. Um, maybe I'm a teacher and I've made this one as an example. And what I wanna do now is I want to create a Buncee board for all of my students and I want to encourage them to share their own book reviews to the board. And that way everyone can see each other's book reviews. Um, maybe we can give each other some book recommendations. Um, and I think it would be a really nice thing. This is something you can do over summer break or over you know any, any sort of school break that you're having, or even just throughout the school year um, as kind of a fun way to encourage students to read and to find maybe new books um, and get, you know, get recommendations from their peers. So there's a couple of different ways that you can do this. Um, one way, of course, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to click share and I'm just I'm going to copy the link to my Buncee right now, um, just so I have that. Um, but what I'm going to do now, I am going to make my Buncee board and I'm going to add my Buncee to it. So that way my students have an example um, to do that. I'm going to go back to my dashboard and um, one thing uh, that you might notice, of course, is again, I'm on the Buncee's tab right here. And right next to that, you might have noticed the boards tab. I can click on that. And here I'm able to view all of the boards that I have, of course. Um, I can view boards that have been shared with me and I can view boards that I'm subscribed to so I can see notifications and things like that. Um, to get started with a new board, what I'm gonna do is click the plus sign and now this is my board so I uh, can you know change the settings and I can edit it as much as I want to I can control what it's called and things like that um, so I'm gonna go ahead and make some edits so I'm gonna call this oops, book reviews and I can enter a description here um, if I want to but I don't have to um, I am gonna be clear I'm gonna tell my students um, 
Um, uh, they actually don't, they don't have to copy my template. So I'll say, um, you know, I could say, And when I'm done, I can click done. And now to add a Buncee to a Buncee board, you and your students all have the same options. You can go ahead and click the plus sign. And anytime you have a link to a Buncee, um, as long as it's, uh, you know, if it's yours or as long as it's um, the permissions allow anyone to view it, you can just copy and paste that link right there. And you can click the plus sign to add this Buncee to the board. And it's as simple as that. So as again, as long as you have the link to the Buncee, um, you're able to do that. Now, another option is you can click choose a Buncee. And this will show you your Buncee dashboard. So any Buncee that is yours that you have in your dashboard, um, you can add right to the board yourself. So I can actually add up to five at a time. So if I have a lot that I want to add, um, I can do them in little batches like this and that's great. I can go ahead and click submit, for example. Um, and now those Buncees have been added to the board. So super easy. Um, now let's say I didn't actually mean to add all of these and I don't really want them here. So what I'm going to do is I can click edit and at any time I can edit my title, the description, I can move Buncees, uh, Buncees around. Um, so that's really great if I want them to be on here in a specific order. Uh, and of course I can delete them. So I'm just going to go ahead and delete all of them actually, um, just because I want to show you another way to add um, our book review to the board. So now I'm all done. Um, and another option for adding your Buncee to the board. So every board that you make comes with its own unique share code up here at the top. I can copy that. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to my Buncee and I'm, we're going to go back where we were earlier. I'm going to click the share button and I'm going to click the share to boards button. I'm going to paste the code right there and I'm going to click share. And my Buncee has now been shared to that board. I can share it to another board if I want to, or I can click view Buncee board and I can be taken right back to that board actually. Um, so you might have noticed, um, this is a really easy way to add your Buncee to a Buncee board. If you want to, um, you can just give your students that board code. You can copy it and share this wherever you want it to go. Um, and then students can make their Buncee and then they can just enter that code and it will be, their Buncee will be added to the board and then they can be taken to that board, um, to, you know, to view that as well. So that's a great option if you want to do that. Um, as you notice, it's also a way for you to share your Buncee boards, um, which is what we're going to talk about in just a bit. Um, so my Buncee has been added to the board. Um, now I do want to share my Buncee board out, but before I do that, I want to take a look at my settings, of course. So if I take a look at settings, um, I can uh, automatically, I'm on the little eye icon, which means I can control who can view this Buncee board. Everyone, even though there's a little globe right here, it doesn't mean everyone in the world can view this automatically. It does mean that um, anyone with a link to this Buncee board can view this Buncee board. So just be aware of that. Um, if you do have Buncee for schools and districts, you do have the option to share with only those on your domain. So if you want to do that, you can. Or again, you can make this private. If you click the pencil, you can control who can add Buncees to the board. Again, you have these same options of who can add Buncees. If you want, you can require approval so you can see who's trying to add what before it goes live where everyone can see it. Um, so that's an option as well. And additionally, you can uh, you can control the settings on the comments as well. You can allow comments on the board um, or not at all. See the comment button actually goes away. Um, or you can allow them but require approval or not. Um, and we'll talk about comments in just a little bit. but. Um, know that you can turn that on and off and same for the comments on the individual Buncees that are on this board. You can turn that on and off or require the approval. Um, additionally, you can allow copies to be made of this board or not. So if you want to have just a duplicate of this board for whatever reason, you can um, turn that on and off if you want to. If you click on activity, you can see what everyone posted and what they said and when. Um, if anything is pending your review, you can approve it or not right here. So all in one place. 
So I think all of my settings are good and ready and I'm ready to share this with my students. Now, I, again, I could share this share code with them. I can just copy it and paste it and tell them, hey, make a Buncee and um, share, you know, then um, go ahead and put in this board code and share it to this board. Um, but what I want to do actually is I'm going to share it in another way because if I share, if I just share the board with them, um, then they're actually able to see my Buncee. They can see my example um, and see what I did and then they can uh, create their own. And if they wanted to, they can also copy this. They can open it up and copy it um, just so they could use it kind of as a template. Maybe I want to include a template here for, for them. Um, so that way I, I could do that. And then I only have to share one link with my students. So that's a great option. Um, so to do that, to take a look at my sharing options, I can click share. And um, of course, Right here I have share with friends and this is you know basically anywhere that I want to share it. I can share directly to social media with the push of a button again. Uh, again I can share with that share code. Um, I can share with the QR code. That's also an option. Um, additionally I can of course anywhere you can share a link you can share a Buncee and the same goes for Buncee boards. You can copy and paste this link and share it wherever you need it to go. If I want to share directly with my students, um, I can click share with students and really similar to sharing a Buncee, I can select my class that I want, select my students, and then I can click share. And this is my favorite way to share. It's very easy. Um, you're just sharing directly with your student accounts. So then my students, when they log into Buncee, uh, what they're going to do is they're going to go to, of course, they're going to be on their Buncee dashboard. They're going to be on the Buncee's tab. Um, they can click on the boards tab and then they click on shared with me. They will see the Buncee board that I shared with them right here. They can click on it. They can open it up. They can view it. And of course, in this case, they can see anything that I added to the board. If I have um, resources or materials or things like that, um, they can view that and then they can add their own Buncee to this board in any of the ways that I just mentioned. That, that's all open to them as well. So let's say, for example, that this Buncee board is filled with Buncees and um, our, you know, basically everyone is able to uh, see each other's Buncees. They can add their own Buncees. Um, what are some things that we can do now at this point? Um, so of course we can open the Buncees up. We can see all the pages. We can interact with this just like it's a normal Buncee because of course it is. It's just right here. Um, so we can, you know, play our audio or video or anything like that, click and drag. Um, we can give it a like or a love or a thumbs up with these emoji reactions. Um, and of course we can comment and reply to those comments as well. Um, so that's a really great option for having that virtual class discussion. Um, I can just kind of open the Buncees and scroll through them and, and take a look at them. Um, and of course, I can comment on the board as well. So again, just a lot of options for you um, to have that virtual class discussion in a safe and secure environment um, and allow for students to really practice those digital citizenship skills. So now that we have explored Buncee boards, and um, I know we have actually explored a lot of things over the course of this webinar, um, we've really been diving deep into creating Buncees and sharing and boards and examples and all sorts of things that you can do. Um, and it might seem a little bit overwhelming um, right now. You might be thinking, well, these are great, but I'm not really sure where to get started. I'm not sure what I can do and what my students can do. Um, and to that, I would say uh, totally understandable. Um, I have just shared a lot of information with you, but really, A, there's no right or wrong way to get, you know, to get started with Buncee. Um, and it is very easy once you just kind of get started and get exploring. But definitely, I would recommend checking out Ideas Lab. Ideas Lab is a great place to go to get started if you're not really sure what you can do or what your students can do and things like that. So Ideas Lab is this hub of different kinds of content made by different you know creators, made by the Buncee team, made by educators. Um, there's different kinds of materials here and here you'll get a really good idea of what you and your students can do. Um, so very similarly to the templates library, you do have a search bar. So if you wanted to search for science, for example, you'll find different science related activities. 
um, and things like that. If you want to, you can also filter by topic area. So if you're looking for, um, for example, social studies, um, you can find social studies uh, activities. You can also filter by grade level. So if you want to filter um, just for elementary school social studies, you can find some things there. Um, there's really a lot that you can explore and take a look at. Um, and really, even though you can search for, um, you know, topic areas and grade levels, if you see something that you like, um, well, uh, many, or I would say most of these are customizable, just like our templates. And you might find something that you really like for, um, you know, maybe it's a science idea, but you think, huh, I really, I think I could really use this in my history class for whatever it is. You maybe just like, uh, the structure or the, you know, the template, it's something that you can customize yourself. Um, or maybe you see something that is good for middle school, but you think, oh, I can make some adjustments and I can use this for high school, or I can make some adjustments and use this for elementary school. Um, absolutely. These things are meant to be kind of a jumping off point for you. So, there's a lot, a lot to explore. If you find something you like, you can always click the little bookmark button and you'll find it here under bookmarked. Um, and here is where I just keep some of my absolute favorite things here. And again, you'll notice a wide variety of different kinds of things in templates library. So for example, um, sometimes you uh, will click on an item and you will see the view this option. So you can view kind of a little preview of it right here. Um, and of course, you know, the title and a little description of what it is. Um, if you like this, you can click view this. And this one is actually an SEL toolkit that is just here for you to use. Um, and it's just, it's full of resources and all sorts of things. Um, you know, template activities, it's actually full of Bunsy boards, full of template activities that you can use and copy and use on your own. Um, so this is a great resource. If you like this, you can share this out. You can just have it for yourself or you can you can also copy it. Um, if you wanted to edit this, you could use this. Maybe you want to add some of your own resources specific to your school. You could do that and share it out. Um, you could also just view it or close it. Um, so it's totally up to you. So that's uh, one kind of example of something that you might find in Ideas Lab. Um, Another example is something again like this. Um, I think it's on the second page actually. So excuse me while I just scroll through. Um, <clears throat> so something like this, this was actually submitted by an educator. So a lot of our ideas are submitted by educators. Uh, again, we can see kind of a little preview of it. Um, this is just a lesson about uh, Walt Whitman. So again, if you like this, you could click view this and you can open this up. And uh, again, you can just view this and share it with your students like this. You can share it using the share button, share options. Uh, and of course, you can copy this as well. And again, you can just have a copy of it in your dashboard for you to use as you like, or you can even click edit. And just like a template, you can edit this as much as you want. This is your own copy now. So you can edit this, you can change this around, you can add to it however you want to edit this and make this your own, you can do so. Um, Another example, though, there are so many different um, kinds of activities and things here. A lot of our templates will be things like this. Um, you will see, or a lot of our ideas rather, um, they will be linked to templates. So in this case, you might see an example of a summer reading journal. So this is the idea is what it could look like when it's all done to kind of hopefully inspire you and um, show you kind of some examples of what you can really do. Um, so for example, this is a summer reading journal. Um, you can see the, uh, the directions here, and then you can see what the student did, what they filled in. Um, so they're able to, uh, you know, do that and then recreate a scene from the book. So they're able to do that and include audio. Um, so this might be one example of something you see in Ideas Lab. Uh, if you like this, you can click Create This, and then you can click Edit, and it's going to guide you to a template. Um, so. Uh, of course, you as the teacher, you could edit this template as much as you want. Um, so maybe you want to edit the directions and you want to tell them to maybe, um, you know, maybe you want to include something that says, you know, you must read at least five books. Um, so you can do that as well. Make this a little bit bigger. Um, so you can include that. 
maybe you want to include a section uh, where you ask them what their favorite part was and you tell them uh, maybe to use video or audio. Um, but essentially, whenever you're ready, just like a template, you can share this with your students. Um, they can copy it, edit it, and in this case, um, they can follow your directions and they can, you know, start typing and, and uh, add in whatever they want, you know, whatever they want to here, add in the title, the author, what happened, and then this is a page prompting them to recreate a scene from the book. There are so many different um, examples of different activities and things like that. And again, these are things that are here ready for you to use, ready for you to make your own, ready for you to customize and ready for your students to to make your own and to customize as well. So it's it's ready for them to get creative and um, and to get started uh, creating in their own way. Um, so definitely I would recommend exploring Ideas Lab. There are really so many different things um, that you can explore and that you can learn about. And that brings us to the end of our webinar. Thank you so much for sticking with me and for taking the time to learn more, a little bit more about Buncee. Hopefully you have learned a lot if you're new and you're really excited to get out there and get started creating. Um, hopefully if you are just wanting to learn a little bit more and you've used before, um, hopefully you have some fresh ideas. Maybe you learned something you didn't know already. Um, and no matter what, uh, hopefully, you all are inspired to try some new ideas, try some new things, and that you can't wait to get started creating. So again, thank you so much for joining in and we'll see you next time. Take care.